Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today we're going to be talking about celebrities you may not know are Catholic. Yeah, we're going to look at some of the biggest names in Hollywood that are actually Catholic and how their Catholicism affects their work, their public persona, and more. Inquiring minds need to know. All right, really grateful you're joining us for another episode. Really excited about today. We have Jacqueline Burkpile here with us from Church Pop. Jacqueline, Bing. welcome. Hello. And we've got Ryan Shield and Ryan. Father Rich Pagano. What's up? Yeah, really excited about this episode. Um, so who are we going to be talking about? Well, we're going to be talking about a lot of people that you've seen their movies, you've seen their shows, you've heard them play music, and they're very influential in secular culture. But you might not know that they are actually Catholics. And I think the perception is that in Hollywood, it is a completely godless, forsaken place, which is partially true. But there's also some very good Catholics there. There's also some Catholics who are trying to be good Catholics. And there's also some people that you would never uh, you know, expect to be Catholic that actually are. There's a couple of people on this list that I was absolutely shocked to right. find out that yeah. they're Catholic. Right now, not all of these people, you know, I don't think, I think if you go into this episode with the expectation that we're going to be talking about uh, saintly Catholics in Hollywood, you're probably going to be disappointed. Now, there are certainly some Catholics in Hollywood who, you know, put our faith to shame, who are just incredible people, who are incredibly orthodox. But then there's also one incredibly that, philanthropic too. Yeah, I mean, I'm not they, ashamed. Very, very generous. You're one of I'm the. I'm not ashamed. You're one of the stars. Nobody's putting me to shame. I'm not a shameful guy. You're not a shameful guy. You're not. You're, Jacqueline, you're absolutely shameless. Yeah, I'm I definitely am. Yeah. See? Yeah. Right. You know, and another thing too is you practice your faith, right? Yes. We're talking about practice. Practice. We're talking about practice. That's here. all it is. I mean, that's what it's all about. You practice this right. stuff. You practice every day. Yeah. So we'll go through some of these uh, celebrities, and then I think we should also talk about uh, essentially how there is this. I don't want to say double standard, but celebrities are held to different standards than your rank and file person on the streets. Mm -hmm. And because they're public and they're, right? they're yeah. under the spotlight constantly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. could you imagine living your life out uh, in the public sphere and having your faith be part of that? And, and being how trolled, that, yeah. being trolled, you know, how people troll people. Yeah. You I mean, know that. You know that. Yes. People troll definitely. you? Definitely. Yeah. Well, people troll the website all the time. Church uh, pop website. Yes. Yeah. We I, got a couple of trolls too. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Church Pop and what it is and where they can find it and how that uh, got rolling. Well, we you can find us at churchpop.com and on Facebook and Instagram and, well, Twitter too. So we reach out to, we just, our ministry is fun and informative and we cover anything that we think is going to engage our audience, whether they're Catholic or Christian, mm -hmm. and we're part of the EWTN network. So, and I'm the editor, if I, we didn't say that already. So if there's a, a misspelled word, they, they would reach out to you. Oh yeah. Okay. And I'm sure they do. <laughs> they always do. Trolls. Yep. Misspelled word trolls. <laughs> we're going to have to put you on speed dial for us too, because sometimes we have some misspelled words. Do you help with pronunciation? <laughs> uh, I can. <laughs> Yeah, we have a problem with Latin. We do, we yeah. Do. We yeah. do have a problem with Latin. Our Latin yeah. is, I think, as they say in Latin, no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband can help with that. He, he knows Latin. Yeah, that's good. Speed dial. Cool, so this, these, 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 uh, these, these church pop posts, is it just regarding like popular people or what, how do you, how do you approach like material and content for your, for your website? Well, I think it's just based on what we think is going to reach the most audience the most, the most people. So interesting stories. Yes, interesting and, story. Yeah. Like such as, you know, we do a lot of, a lot of stuff on celebrities because that helps people, you know, identify with I, their faith. Yes. And, identif yeah. Identify with their faith and understand that, you know, these are people too. Celebrities are people too. And they, they don't just, they, they're not just, you know, things to look at in the spotlight. Cause mm -hmm. whenever you, I mean, Whenever I meet, for instance, a Catholic celebrity, you're like, oh, well, they're human like too. Him? Like yeah. your celebrity priest right here? I'm yeah. no Mike Schmidt. You're, you're no Mike Schmidt. Yeah. I'm you're no Mike Schmidt. -list. I'm a C-list. I'm not even thinking I'm on the C-list. You're, you're the Kathy Griffin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kathy 
<laughs> celebrities. <laughs> Yeah, if you want them to come talk at your parish, it's really cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Just pay for my flight. <laughs> no, I, you know, I think the way that Church Pop covers media and the, the types of stories that they cover really connects Catholicism to a more of an everyday uh, occurrence than maybe EWTN or National Catholic Register does, which is maybe more inside baseball for mm, yeah. more mm-hmm. um, rank and file Catholics. But Church Pop does a great job covering celebrities and occurrences and kind of viral stories. Yeah. So we thought it was great to have you on this episode to talk about celebrities now it is great to have you i've You're got i've got first to say female guest that's true so big yeah. big big shout out to, <laughs> that's awesome yeah for sure <laughs> that's cool you yeah. know I've, i follow mark Wahlberg, and i just love anything that i see him on like I'm, besides you know all yeah. the movies and stuff like that but yeah. whenever he's with like a bishop or you know talking about you know vocations. ash wednesday or vocations or lent or whatever yeah. i just eat that up because i just think the world of, of mark Wahlberg. I'm a big fan. You I'm are. a big fan. He, and you guys corrected me. He doesn't go by Marky Mark. He doesn't anymore. go by Marky Mark. No, he would choke you yeah, out. Of I know. Which <laughs> actually, that would be great to have Mark Wahlberg on the show to see him choke yeah. you out, you know, yeah. by calling him Marky Mark. Let's Gosh. do that for cele- I, for charity. I would love to meet him Celebrity someday. Celebrity death he, I mean, I, I know that we haven't started on our list yet, but he he goes to church every day. Yeah, he's pray. awesome. And he, I mean, I don't know if he goes to daily mass every day if, but I do know he goes to church, which is amazing. I got amazing. a video of him from a friend of mine that lives in Hollywood. He uh, videotaped a talk that he was giving. It was pretty good. Maybe mm-hmm. we can use well, that or post that. Yeah, he's so, he's so involved. That, so if you're not following Mark Wahlberg, definitely go on Instagram. Go on you know, social media. Follow I think Mark it's at Wahlberg. Marky Mark. At Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. But you know, if you're not, go, make sure that you do that. Somebody else that you need to follow is the Catholic Talk Show. So on all of the social media channels, from Twitter to Instagram to Facebook. We're out there. We want you to be with us on this journey of faith. And also visit us at catholictalkshow.com where you can find out any way that you could listen in or view. If you do want to view, view us on YouTube. And when you go to our channel, The Catholic Talk Show, make sure that you subscribe and click the little bell. So whenever we have a video, it's producing on your feed so you know that you're not missing anything that we're producing. Yeah, you're helping making us uh, celebrities, and we appreciate yeah. it. Move me up from the D-list, like maybe to no, C+. Plus. C. Uh, C+. C+. Plus. C+. Plus. C+. Plus. C+. Plus. It's, it's the best. best. It's the best. <laughs> it's, and to... somebody else who's the best is our patrons. Yeah. So patreon.com yes. forward slash the Catholic Talk Show. It gives you an opportunity to support our show financially. There's special content and also some, you know, special items like coffee mugs and they call that in the industry. sweatshirts. Swag. It's swag, yeah. Catholic yes. swag. Yeah, as can... well as a vampire slaying kit. Do we still have that? We still have those. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. awesome. Yeah. And there's vampires and... out there need slaying. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> so, yes, Padre. <laughs> So which celebrity are we going to first? All right. So I I think to start off this list, uh, there's a lot of great stories about him on Church Pop, and I'll make sure that I share those out. But this is one of them. Look, if you don't love this guy, there's probably something wrong with your moral compass. John Wayne. No. Bill Murray. Oh, Bill Bill Murray. Murray. Bill Murray is a national treasure. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I don't know anybody who doesn't like Bill Murray. Yeah. He's I just, don't. No, just kidding. His, his sister, <laughs> I don't trust you. His sister is a nun, right? Or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. She is a Dominican wow. traveling nun. And what? she does plays, I think, about St. Catherine of Siena. Oh, yep. wow. All over the country. Wow. And she still That's travels. Cool. So she just got, I think she was just touring this summer. Yeah. I've got to bring her to the diocese. That would be cool. Yeah. So she's she's a nun who does a, what, a touring like show. So like yeah. she acts. So yeah. I guess, you know, the acting runs in the family. Ah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty epic. Mm-hmm. Bill Murray's like he's he's got he's got this weird like this 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 aura about him where he like shows up at people's parties randomly yeah. and you know what the best story I ever heard about Bill Murray is what's that? And I believe this story. Some guy was sitting there eating at a Wendy's. Mm-hmm. Bill Murray just walks in, walks up to someone's table, looks him in the eye, takes one French fry, eats it, and then looks at him and says, "No one will ever believe this happened." <laughs> and then just walked cool. out. Oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> Like Bill, I was in Wendy's and Bill Murray came up and ate one of my French fries. I was like, no, it didn't happen. And Bill Murray's like, no one will ever believe that this happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, Didn't he like walk up behind somebody in the bathroom in the urinal and he like covered the, covered his eyes? <laughs> that's a Bill Murray story. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, I think that's a true Bill Murray. I mean, you can totally picture Bill Murray doing something like yeah. that. Now, he's, he's I don't hilarious. Know, I don't know if this oh, is going to ruin your perception of Bill Murray because you know we know how you roll. <laughs> how do I roll? Very gently and softly with your soap opera beard, <laughs> and you always you always bust on me for being too traditional. But Bill Murray definitely falls in that camp. Oh, does he go to the Trinity mm-hmm. Mass? 
he's so this is a quote from him. He was giving an interview and he's like, I miss the old mass and I tend to disagree what they call the new mass. I think we lost something by losing the Latin. Wow. Now, if you go to Catholic mass, even just in Harlem, it can be in Spanish. It can be in Ethiopian. It can be in any number of languages. Um, but the words aren't the same. So he, you know, to his mind, not having the dilutes the it dilutes the the meaning because you've got all these different interpretations and the, uni- the, the universality the, the, exactly. of the yeah. of the celebration right. of the liturgy in one language the yeah. language of the church Latin being celebrated in any church around the world all would the major show religions that have a liturgical language universality yeah, yeah. yeah. they have a, a sacred language that mm-hmm. the, the Jews mm-hmm. have Hebrew and the uh, the but it's not have, to discount the vernacular and the delivery of, of revelation hey, look, man, take it up with Bill Murray, the language me. that's understandable. Take it up with Bill Murray. No, but I, I think I think that's true. And then even in Vatican II documents, the encouragement is that Latin is still used, you know, within the, you know, for example, the Sanctus, the Agnus Dei, Mysterium Fidei, all of these, all of these different, uh, you know, Latin expressions liturgically is encouraged to be used in the Novus Ordo. Yeah. So Bill Murray, that... The comedian that everyone loves is a devout Catholic with a sisters who is a Dominican nun That's who misses the Latin mass. That's I don't Pretty know cool. how many people out there expected that from Dr. Vinkman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, another fabulous. one, I think this one, what's uh, Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. what's the show that they're on? Isn't it like the, the voice? voice? The voice. The voice. Yeah. The vibe. The vibe. I don't <laughs> watch TV. <laughs> the yeah. voice. Yeah, I don't, so I don't, I don't watch TV. Are they both either. Catholic? Well, here's the interesting thing. So I was, in researching this, I got some insider Hollywood gossip. Oh, oh yeah. like, Look, man, I love gossip. When's Gwen, man. Like, <laughs> everyone's out there like, when's Gwen and Blake getting married? What's mm-hmm. going on? Why aren't they married yet? And you know? I do. You're in the know, bro. Here, so, okay, tell us. Tell you don't us. watch tell TV, us, but us, you man. have all of the... Uh, I have, I have connections. I'm at the edge of my seat. And, so, <laughs> and on the website, it says juicy info. Oh, we you pay have to for pay? juicy. We pay for, for juicy, juicy info. info. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, according to the insider knowledge, the reason that Gwen and Blake have not gotten married yet is because Gwen Stefani is incredibly Catholic, and until they can um, get a get proper permission from the church to get married, she won't get married. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Mm. I had no idea. Yep. Yeah, she's, I have such respect for that, for that position. I mean, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Now, Gwen Stefani actually follows one of the websites that Ryan and I run, you Catholic. Yeah. 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 Like, we'll be on Instagram, and we'll post a story, and Gwen Stefani will like it. And we're like, yeah. that's pretty cool. That's yeah. fabulous. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the you follow, You guys, Gwen. I mean, that's that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Th- thanks, Gwen. Like, that's, like that's and subscribe to this. your B-list. I'm B, yeah. You B. <laughs> yeah, we got some So what about content. Blake? I, guess I bet he's... you she follows Church Bob. Um, that, I uh, didn't think Blake was Catholic. I didn't Is he either. Catholic? No, but he but he said he will convert. Really? Yeah. Well, well that look, that's yeah. wow. It, look, I, we I, used to record out in Hollywood, and I, you know we know met some people out there. Slip a slip a twenty like in uh, Hollywood Confidential. Like, 20. hey, give me the infor- information. <laughs> What's going on? What's going that's on? That's amazing. Yeah, that is. That's cool. Hey, what's her. going on with Gwen and Blake? I got I a Jackson Gwen. that wants to know. Twenty yeah. bucks. <laughs> I think she's great. Just a great musician. Mm-hmm. Really spunky mm-hmm. Italian. I love yeah. her personality. Yeah, oh, me yeah. Too. she's just so joyful yeah. all the time. And she's so kind, like just yeah. really genuinely kind person. Yeah, loving. You know the way she supports all of her artists. That she, you know, I watch The Voice from and you time know, to it, time. You know, uh, you can say a lot of things about her, but you, I know for sure that she is no Hollaback girl. <laughs> right? <laughs> Ain't no Hollaback girl. <laughs> uh, I a song about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Father Rich, you are bananas. B A N A N A S. Oh gosh. Bananas. So um, another thing that I think just about everyone in the country watches is late night TV, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we're in maybe the golden era of competition in late night TV. Now, they're, I don't think they're quite the standard that they used to be, but the four big ones are Fallon, Kimmel, Conan O'Brien, and Stephen Colbert. Colbert. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right? The Catholic Church has a complete monopoly. Every, All four of them are Catholic. Mm-hmm. So all of the major uh, night, tonight shows. Or I didn't know Jimmy shows. Kimmel mm-hmm. was. Yes, That's, he is. Yeah. Now, there was an article I read Are on they Church all practicing? Pop. I know Colbert practices. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's right. So I, I was read an article on Church Pop, actually, where Colbert was... Um, Actually, I'm sorry. Kimmel was defending uh, priests Priest. against yeah. the accusation that they're all I saw that. You know, abusers. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Good yeah. for him. It was on Church Bob. 
Do you know Colbert? He ruined the King is Glory, the King of Glory song. Oh, yeah, the King it, of Glory. It, yeah, that, he, he was the one who wrote it. No, do you know who ruined that? The person who wrote it. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. But the way, because I mean, I heard that annually in church. But now I can't. Song. Oh, it's a terrible song. The worst. What? But seeing him, the King of, of Glory, glory comes, comes the nation rejoices. Sing it, girl. Open the gates for him. Lift up, up your voices. voices. Oh. Yeah, but he did. Have you seen that? Have you seen that video of Stephen no, Colbert? No, I haven't. He dances to the whole thing and sings Wait, to the I point have. of exhaustion, and then he just <laughs> <laughs> collapses. It Col- is Colbert hilarious. is actually a catechist at his church. Now yeah. he's he was. I don't know if he is. Well, currently, I don't know if he, he still is. But I mean, look, all these education. guys are pretty liberal, right? They, yeah. and I, they really are. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anybody would say, "Oh, well, they are right in line with doctrine." But I do think that they're. You know, I don't think it's an accident that all four of these people who are in this conversational setting who have both a, a balance between humor and the ability to really have dialogue with other people come from Catholic backgrounds. Mm-hmm. I think that says something about the way that the faith forms somebody in their formative years mm-hmm. that allows them to be very, uh, to have that type of relationship and also to balance humor, promotion, and all of those types of mm-hmm. things. So, mm-hmm. uh Jimmy Fallon, he's another guy that says uh, he misses the Latin mass. Mm. Mm-hmm. Bring awesome. Latin back. Yeah. What did yeah he he's, he's a pretty positive dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he said he's, um, there's an, I'm on church, Pop. <laughs> says Bill Murray and Jimmy Fallon miss the old Latin mass. And that, uh, so Fallon wasn't giving an interview. He's like, I, I went out to LA and I was trying to go to mass and everyone's holding hands and playing guitars. And <laughs> he's like, and I'm not, he, people are lifting each other up like Simba. In the Lion King, <laughs> yeah. throwing beach balls and <laughs> lighting lighters, holding hands. Oh holding my hands. gosh. Yeah. He's like, this is too much. And then he said, so all this stuff's going on. And I think to myself, this is too much for me. I want the old way. I want to hang out with the nuns, go to the grotto, straight up, just mass, mass. So, mm. yeah. What's the deal? It's just weird with the holding hands stuff. What is that? Is that like some new phenomenon or something? Like Holding hands like it, during it, the Our Father? Yeah. Like th- sometimes I'll sit next to somebody at church and then, you know, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really hand. like holding hands with people during and mass. I don't want to be mean and rude. You know, but it's I don't like, either. Yeah. But I pretend, no. sometimes I pretend like I'm sick yeah. and I'm all oh, <laughs> just never break the cross during mass. You know, and then you're fine. That's what they used to teach. Do you, do you stand there at mass like this whole time? The whole time for real? No, <laughs> no, he oh, doesn't like, do that. Well, mass with you. <laughs> the whole time I'm like Johnny, stop. You know. Um, <laughs> Another now, this is another really interesting um, celebrity story about the Catholic faith, and that's uh, Martin Sheen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He oh did my that gosh, movie. he is just—I I can't even believe we have a quote on Church Pop about Martin Sheen. What's that? Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I do oh, you don't know? So okay. Why you look for that now? Martin Sheen's not his real name. For real? No, it's not. I didn't know that. So here's so Martin Sheen. Well, you know he has two sons, right? Charlie Sheen. Yeah. And then his other son, um, Emilio, Emilio Estevez. Estevez. Well, what's up with that, right? Oh, yeah. Right? They're what's both, up with that? They're both biologically full brothers, so why do they have separate names? Because they change their name when they act. Yeah. So do you know what Martin Sheen's real name is? What? Francisco Estevez Martinez. Whoa. No wonder he changed his name. He changed That's his, a cool name, though. That's a it cool is. name. But he changed his name because he wanted to make it in Hollywood. Sure. And do you know who he named himself after? Who? Fulton Sheen. Yeah. What? Martin no Sheen, way. Charlie cool. Sheen has the last name Sheen because they changed their family name because of uh, Venerable Sheen. Fulton Sheen. I oh, would have never phenomenal. thought Beautiful. that. Yeah. Mm, Beautiful. Ever. Yeah, Martin Sheen growing up, um, he was, I think there was 10 kids in his family. Um, his mother died young and it was his father and 10 kids and they were going to basically split him up and go to orphanages. Oh, wow. And if it weren't for the um, the nuns, um, in Holy Catholic, Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Dayton, Ohio, mm. the nuns and the church and the community provided for them to keep all the kids together. Very so like beautiful story. Yeah. Wow. You know, he did this, he did a movie called the way, the way. And, oh, and it yeah. was the uh, most popular pilgrimage. It's the, um, what is the it? Sa- yeah, yeah. The, the Santiago de Compostela yeah. with the, yeah. the way, you know, yeah, the, you, you're going yeah, the way of St. James. Yeah. I'm hoping to, I mean, yeah. not with those yeah. knees, you're not, not, with, yeah. not with these current knees. It was a beautiful yeah. movie, man. Yeah. It was oh, like yeah. really, yeah, it was so beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. It was a really, really cool, inspiring movie, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, with an interview in an interview with, it says onbeing.org. I've never heard of it, but it was a spiritual interview. He said that he had 
uh, returned to the church after falling away, and it was the single most joyful moment of my life. And then he talked about the Eucharist, and he said regarding prayer, that communion at the Eucharist, and for the most part, I'm just so stunned and so joy-filled that for the most part, I just say, Thank you. Mm, yeah. Thank you for your presence. That's what Eucharist means. Right? And that's exactly <laughs> Eucharist. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thanks. So wow. that, that goes to what we were sharing last night, you know, about how complicated we make evangelization and how we, yeah. you know, we complicate things in delivery. Yeah. When you were sharing last night, it's, it's all about the Eucharist. And that's been your motto from the first moment that I met you, like, 14 years ago or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that central, central reality that he is with us. Yeah. It's just so amazing. Like human frailty. Like I, I never knew that I, I, when I was a kid, I heard God speaking to Mm -hmm. me in my Mm -hmm. heart during the Eucharistic time and afterwards. And, and then I, I fell away from the church. And when I came back, I literally came back. I met Christ in the Eucharist and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is you right. Completely radically changed my life. Like the scales just came off. And, and then I'm like, what, 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 what are we doing as a ch- church? Like, this is, this is the single most powerful thing person on, on the, pl- this, the like, stop everything you're doing and preach that. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it, it is, it's not only medicine for the sick, but it's the most beautiful communion you can have with God. And it's and like, to, con- to consider that, you know, 68 or 70% of Catholics don't believe in the true presence of Jesus. Mm-hmm. We need more opportunities in yeah. the liturgy to be able to express what we truly believe and to draw the attention to the reality of Christ's presence yeah. in the Eucharist. Do this in remembrance of me. Yeah, you know, talking about Martin Sheen and Fulton Sheen, Fulton Sheen had a great quote about the Eucharist. He says that uh, the greatest love story of all time is contained in a tiny white host. Mm-hmm. The divine romance. Yeah. 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 I just, it just lights me up, man. He just lights me up every time mm-hmm. I eat him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I tell my kids too, we're going to eat Jesus. That's what I say. We're going to go eat Jesus. We're going to church. We're going to eat Jesus. <laughs> That's, I'm, all, I'm all over yeah. about that, you yeah. know? So the banquet, the feast, man. And it's true. And to think that we share at the same altar, the same table with some of these celebrities that we're talking about, but yeah. really when it comes to true celebrity, true true star capacity, mm. the light that is in Jesus is, is something that we all need and we're yeah. all desperate for. And the celebrities we're talking about, and I just love that quote that you just shared, realize that same reality and they're, they're drawn to it the mm. same way that we are. All right. So let's talk about a couple other Catholic celebrities. Let's get into this list and maybe move a little bit faster and uh, get into some other conversations. But did you know that Fergie's Catholic. Fergie. Fergie. No way. Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. yeah. I you didn't know sense? that. Yeah, she gave an interview. She says uh, every Saturday night they go to the vigil mass and then like good Catholics afterwards, they go out and drink wine. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Uh, the boss, Bruce Springsteen. Ah. Oh, yes. I did know that. Yeah, he's His whole, you know, a lot of people who study Bruce Springsteen like music because people do because they're like obsessive about his music. But sure. You know, Catholic imagery and the Catholic experience is completely woven throughout all of his music. Um, I have not seen that. I thought he was he Born was falling. I USA. think he fell away. Mama Mary, but was, he he <laughs> said all of his music is his Catholic faith is intertwined in his lyrics. Yeah, cool. mm-hmm. he said this during a Tony's performance. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yes, I like it when they publicly like declare their faith. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Cause mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people, um, we, we're familiar with some people in Hollywood that are actors that they don't go public for certain reasons. They're good reasons, but they don't want to have that. There's a lot of secret. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of celebrities in Hollywood who are secretly very Catholic, very Orthodox who can't really let it be known but out of fear of losing work. Well, it's not just losing work, but it's, it's the work that God's doing in them that, they are they're they're considering it's it's not it's not like you know greed play right. it's like look i'm it's gonna be wise. able to make more yeah i'm gonna make more impact here if i don't wear it on my sleeve you know and offend x y and z or whatever um it's pretty interesting you know i mean some of them where you know some of them are just like you know what i'm gonna say it and some of them don't there's a there's a group called the friends of abe it's a it's a underground sort of faith network with gary sinise started it and um and a lot of Christian That's Captain Dan from what's that? Gary Sinise, Captain Dan from yeah, Captain Gump. Dan. Yeah. yeah. And he was in CSI for a long time. 
they they started this and and it's a group of people that they get together and and just support each other and pray and things like that. That's my understanding. It's That's on Wikipedia cool. too. When, when people of celebrity use the platform to proclaim a deeper faith that they have, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to encourage men and women that they that that they you know uh, that they have reach to yeah. you know that they can that they can proclaim that as a pretty special yeah. special thing. Yeah. Going back to the boss, he said, uh, Bruce Springsteen, he said, um, you know, he was a fallen away Catholic and, you know, he's super liberal and supports gay marriage and abortion or whatever. But he says that um, he he's almost 70 now. And he said, uh, as you get older, you start to get closer to the other world. And he, he said he's finding himself more and more drawn back to the Catholic Church and that he keeps he's been visiting a small Catholic Church more because the older he gets the stronger he feels uh, the pull back to it and, and the impact that it's had on him. So mm. there you go. The boss, Catholic. The boss. Uh, this is a good one. Antonio Banderas. Oh, yes. Banderas. Antonio. Zorro. Antonio Banderas. Oh, yeah. Banderas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ding. Oh, Zorro. 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 So Antonio Banderas... He's a Catholic. Now, he actually is the officer of a lay Catholic movement in Spain, and they do all kinds of, like, um, Holy Week processions. Like, he's out there in the streets of Spain doing processions for Holy Week. Oh, that's excellent. And I bet you they don't oh treat gosh. celebrities the same in Spain as they do here. No. Probably not. No. I just think the public ridicule and, like, the eye that is on them constantly is it's just that's a pressure that I, mean, I, think, I would never want that's to be called to something like oh, that oh god bless you know? i think it has a lot to do with the media you mm -hmm. know they want to nitpick at everything mm -hmm. yeah. and just you and know tear someone pull, apart. pull people apart yeah. and it's yeah. just completely draining yeah mm -hmm. you know emotionally it's, yeah like well, so the it, hispanic culture it, it celebrates faith and and it it has a sense of they're very proud that Antonio Banderas lives out his faith in such a beautiful way. And, and I think the, the person that, uh, when I think of Catholicism in America, you know, Mark Wahlberg, the, where, the way he wears his faith, and he's just very, very confident and very out there, you know, living out his Catholic beliefs um, is similar. But, you know, I don't know if he receives criticism or, or you know, contrasting voices. So, but, when, so when you post an article on Church Pop about celebrities, um, do you find that in the comments, a lot of people are saying, well, this person's not a good Catholic. Oh, yeah. or, so what, what kind of comments it's, and what do you experience with that? Well, it's really, sometimes that's draining too, because when we post something, we do put a disclaimer a lot of times at the bottom of each article saying, well, this person has done this. Um, not all the time because, okay, we, to me, nitpicking at every bad thing somebody is doing is not going to lead them to greater holiness. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to evangelize and follow and show the example rather than pointing a finger and criticizing someone all the time. That's a good um, point. Yes, we need to, but we don't, I mean, we, we need to take the good from what that person is doing and show people, Hey, this is, this is beautiful. This is such an example and it's brave. And so when we see there are so many people who say, well, this person is a bad Catholic or this person believes this. And yes, it's wrong. And we condemn that completely. But how many of us, what, I mean, what does Jesus say in the, in the scripture? He's who will be the one to cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. Each of us has some kind of fault that we are guilty of, you know, some are more serious than others. Yes. And we're not supposed to, um, we're not supposed to glorify mortal sin. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course we need to say, okay, well, this person does this, but not everything they do is going to be great. And it's, it's a really, it's, it's, I mean, I feel like when we, when we belittle people like that, we are too busy picking at somebody else rather than thinking about how we can become better and holier. I, yeah. I totally agree. The, I was watching this Netflix documentary on Mike Tyson and his manager, D'Amato, and how D'Amato just really almost adopted 
Mike Tyson. Yeah. I mean, he technically did. I mean, Tyson was living with him and, you know, Tyson was coming straight off of the streets Mm -hmm. and, you know, Robin stealing, you know, clearly his faults were before him. Um, and he was being, you know, uh, categorized in that way. And D'Amato got in his head and he started challenging him to become greater and, you know, expressing that he's a champ. He's, he's excellent. You know, just giving him the vision of, and the confidence boost that he's undertaking something great. And, you know, it takes special people like his manager, D'Amato, or, or, you know, somebody to, to really build you up as opposed to picking at your faults constantly. Each of us are imperfect. Each of us are sinners before God. The scripture is very clear that it says the righteous man sins seven times a day. And, you know, that's righteous people. Most of us are, are pursuing Christ, but we need each other's voices in, the, in, our, in each other's lives, yeah. supporting, you know, growth, yeah. supporting holiness, yes. supporting the capacity of greatness that you have. When you have somebody in your life that's mentoring you, coaching you, helping you, giving you an idea of who you are, like you were before, you, to me, like, you're no Mike Schmitz, right? right. That's, that's helping. Which is true. You, you, you are no Mike Schmitz. <laughs> true call to greatness. But, <laughs> but, hold on, hold on. Father Schmitz, if you're looking for a new gig, <laughs> say the word, he's out. <laughs> Hit us up on Instagram. But, but um, <laughs> add us. No, I mean, we, the easiest thing is to pick on each other's faults. It's yeah. the thing that's most, most visible. And celebrities, I think, are, are definitely up there as, as constantly being in the limelight. So, of course, you know, you're going to see the faults. You're going to see the falls. Politicians, priests, p- police officers, people that are in the public square that are taking up some type of leadership are always going to be ridiculed and looked at. But, man, do we need a different cultural shift to be yeah. able to support each other Right. Especially in weakness. Yeah, our it, media loves tearing people down. Oh, man. There's yeah. nothing more than that the media likes than building someone up and then tearing them down. I look at it like the consumption of media. Like, that's what's driving it, right? I mean, like, people love... They love negativity. They love negativity. That's like what it they is. Love, I mean, that's why I got mm-hmm. off Facebook. I'm like, this is ridiculous. These people and these mm-hmm. comments and these things, it's like it's like they just sit around all day and try to get in fights you know, behind a mm-hmm. computer. But, you know, uh, you look at it, it's a, it's a cultural thing. It's the consumption of media. That's why we do the Catholic right. talk show. Uh, but, you know, I, I always look at it like, man, I, I need Christ so much. In my, I'm such a sinner. And I look at these people. If, it's, if it doesn't move you to prayer, mm-hmm. then, then you need to start practicing that mm-hmm. as a Catholic. You need, if, if, you want, if your initial thing is to tear somebody down, move yourself to prayer for them. Move yourself to compassion for them, the compassion that Christ has for them. Mm-hmm. Instructing the ignorant is a work of mercy. It's not like, uh, 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 you know, point right. your finger at them. Mm-hmm. It's a work of mercy. It's, it's merciful, and right? It's important to admonish the sinner, but it's also important not to cast the stone mm-hmm. because we, like we said, are sinners as well. And, you know, it's also draining too to see so many negative comments about like this person, say we cover something about Stephen Colbert. Yes, I know that he is a flaming liberal. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't mean everything he does is bad. Mm-hmm. You know, because we all have a soul and we all are yearning for Christ whether we know it or not. And a, a brother priest uh, commented on something that Stephen Colbert had done that was just very um, you know, very admirable and you know, he mentioned it in a homily because he was deeply deeply touched by it. And then next thing you know, multiple letters were written to the bishop. Like, how dare he how support How dare it? he, su- you know, and he wasn't supporting any type of political position. Yes. He was just mentioning, right. you know, something right. that he had done that was admirable. And again, it's, you know, I can't even imagine being a bishop today, Ugh. you know, especially, I mean, I get, I get letters from time to time. Well, I know probably that, not an issue that you're going to have to worry about. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> yeah, clearly. I mean, yeah, that's, that's not we're going to, but you think about these bishops who receive letter after letter after letter of complaint about all of their priests, and they're spending all of their time responding to these it's letters. It's like a hand. really old school Facebook. They're just hearing everyone talk. It, exactly. Junk right. all day long. But I think deep down fundamentally in the human heart, we're wounded. You yeah. know, we are, all of us are wounded. And 
we have an option. Either we open ourselves up to the healing rays of the son of justice that's in the book of Malachi, the person of Jesus Christ that can heal those wounds, or we're constantly seeking to stick blame on why I feel the way that I do. And any opportunity that I could express my anger, my aggression, my frustration because of my wound, and I could latch into somebody, it's going to give me that sense of catharsis. But we know in that sense of weak catharsis, it, our wounds aren't being addressed. Yeah. Right. It's just going to perpetuate over and over and over again until the wounds are healed. And we do stick blame constantly on all sorts of people, why the world is in the state that it's in or why, you know, culturally we are where we are, why the yeah. church is, is, you know, going to hell in the handbasket and we should go back to this or that, whatever. Yeah. It's, I've experienced being uh, admonished as a sinner in love by somebody and, and it, it, it was a good thing for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like we talk about stuff and you're like, no, you're wrong. Like this is, this is where you got to go with it. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? And, and that helps out a lot, you know, mm -hmm. but, but doing it the other way. Well, because admonishing is not, is not ridiculing. Right. It's no. not, it's right. not chopping somebody down. No, it's admonishing because the greater capacity to virtue is before you mm -hmm. and you have a path. Pastorally, we need to meet each other where we are. Yeah. Where, where the other person is to That's walk with them. That's not weak to do that. No. And no. me and you, a lot of times couldn't be more different. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you 100% that it is not weak. It is not soft, liberal, Vatican II church to meet people where they're at. If you think that out there and you think that we are soft or liberal because of that, unsubscribe. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> because that that is not the the primary option is always mercy mm -hmm. and encountering people. Our Lord left the 99 to go after the one. And if you're the type of person who thinks that you can hold others to a standard that you could not live up to yourself and you're in the it's position dangerous. to criticize them, dangerous. you're setting yourself against Christ. Oh man. And, and the other th you yeah, need to look at yourself. Look, there was this like, a couple years ago, uh, Lady Gaga posted something yes. online and Rosary. she said, she said how much she loves the church. And then she posted a picture of her with her priest and said how amazing the Eucharist was, and that it's a it's medicine for Praise the sick, God. right? God. This is Lady God. Gaga, right? Mm -hmm. This is an incredibly high profile person who, in no way, shape, or form, leads what would anyone would imagine to be a Catholic life, and people lost their mind. And like mm -hmm. I shared it on you, Catholic, you shared it on Church Pop. Mm -hmm. It was like, how dare you share this? Look, this is a person saying how much the Eucharist means to them, and how it is impacting their life, and how that true presence in the Blessed Sacrament changes them. Who are you to to throw stones at them? Mm -hmm. I, that that is one of the worst things that I see in our culture is the the immediate need to tear other people down and hold them to standards that they in no way can keep to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg would, did that thing in vocations, and I'm like, wow, he's Catholic. That's crazy. And then I started thinking about some of the movies he made. And I'm like, wow, man, maybe yeah. he's had a conversion or whatever, right? But I mean, I didn't cast any stones. But and then later it came out. He's like, I regret making these movies, right? So so. So I, I didn't judge him, but then he regrets it. And I'm like, beautiful. Just watch it. Just watch <laughs> Mark, Wal Mark Wahlberg uh, was the world meeting of families in Philadelphia. And oh. he was the MC, And the Pope was there. <laughs> and he was emceeing it. He's like um, talking. He's like, and some kids, I said, I loved you and Ted. And he's like, oh. And he's like, holy father, don't watch that movie. Something like <laughs> that. Because Ted is... Yeah, that is yeah. pretty raunchy. It's hilarious, yeah, it's, but it's, it's it's that yeah. It's but so, but you can funny. have a guy who makes the movie Ted, right? Who can then be sharing the stage with the Pope, working on his behalf, and and Mark Wahlberg, like he shares stuff all the time about his faith, how he's praying for more priests, um, yeah. how his daily prayer stuff, how he leads his children. You know, look, you don't know these people. You don't know celebrities. You don't own them. People. In, in modern culture, think they have an ownership stake in celebrities. These are real people. These That's are not weird. a concept. These are people with struggles, with yeah. lives, with uh, experience, and with um, who Christ was crucified every bit as much for the most absurdly liberal, terrible actor as much as the Pope himself. Mm -hmm. And that's the fact. And then if you if you don't think that, then that is formal heresy. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to make a comment to in relationship to living up to a standard, because I think I think when we're Catholic, there's certain standards and structures that help us to live out our faith and what we're called to. Um, you know, I, I say this all the time. If I didn't have the great blessing of, of the vocation to the priesthood and, 
you know, living out the divine mystery every day and celebrating the liturgies and the liturgy of the hours and the, and the celebration of mass, entering into the liturgical structure of the church calendar every day, I don't know where I would be. I need, I need Holy Mother Church to govern my life. She governs my life as a, as a sinner, as, as one who's, who's struggling toward virtue. But if I didn't have the structures of support, I would, I would be lost. Mm-hmm. And I certainly wouldn't be living out as much as I try to live out to the best of my ability, what I'm called to as a Catholic day in and day out. So those standards, I'm grateful for the pressure. I'm grateful for having a community around me that calls me to greatness, you know, and granted there's, there's people in the community that, that tear at me and, yeah, just, I mean, and destroy me. Yeah. But, but at the same time, you know, I'm glad I have that. Because it, it becomes a springboard and a catalyst to greater communion with Christ. And I pray for all of these celebrities that we're talking about that are, that are willingly coming out and expressing their Catholic faith and identity. And I just encourage people that we can be a little more merciful with, with people in public office. And yeah, call to those standards and, and the virtue, but at the same time, do so in, a, in an encouraging, admonishing kind of a yeah, sense. Take mm-hmm. care of yourself first and then work on them. But, mm-hmm. you know... If you've ever felt judged in your parish or in your community, imagine what these people feel like in a hyper, hyper uh, connected global, you know, audience. It's, it's gotta be absolutely insane. And for any celebrity in today's world to share that they are Catholic and they love the Catholic faith publicly is a very brave and bold Mm -hmm. thing that we need more of out of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how are we supposed to, how are they supposed to know that they have support if they, if they're constantly getting criticism and what if say I, I post an article about, let's say Lady Gaga posted something about the rosary again. And I posted something about that. People would definitely be angry about it, but there are people who are happy about it because those articles do really, really well. But say they just, you know, constantly hit at her. Well, how is that going to make her want to live her faith? If the people who are supposedly living their faith are admonishing her and throwing stones at her. Yeah. I mean, so, they're admonishing her when she says she is Catholic or if an actor or an actress says they're Catholic, they're getting, you know, that's when they're getting criticized because they're saying they're Catholic. Well, you're not a good enough Catholic. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm definitely, you know, on the traditional side, but I look, you people who are doing that, that is not okay. It's mm-hmm. just, it's. That is cruel, and it is not the way that our Lord commands us to be towards other people striving for the faith. Mm -hmm. We should be praying for them, too. You know, we should be saying, yay, look at this. They did this, you know, like Jesus says about the lost sheep and uh, being happy about the one who comes back. We need to be praying that they continue to keep coming back and hopefully be in full communion with the church at some point. Not, not just throwing stones and making them feel like they're not good enough or, um, and then praying that they have a change of heart like Stephen Colbert. No, I do not agree with his liberal policies, but it's important to pray that that heart is just, you know, broken through with Jesus's wisdom. Yeah. So let's go to a couple more uh, Catholics. Let's talk about some more people we yes, can bash. Talk, yeah, let's talk about some. <laughs> I am, I'm talk I am about anticipating someone, that someone in this list that I really want to get to. I'm going to talk about someone that you certainly could not bash because he would drop you. That's Rambo. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> try, go ahead and try to bash Sylvester Stallone for being Catholic. He will put you down like a Von Drago. <laughs> He'll put you in a hole like Apollo Creed, right? Get it some. Paper champion. <laughs> so Stallone, I mean... Stallone, obviously, Rocky is one of the greatest movies oh, ever. Yeah. And the very first scene of Yo, Rocky. Father, throw me a blessing. No, that's Rocky too. <laughs> blessing, man. Throw me a blessing. I love that scene. So, I, you know, he's late for the rematch with Apollo <laughs> Creed. He's outside. This is the second movie. And he's outside the window. Of the priest is like, oh, Padre, you want to throw down a blessing so I don't get beat up too bad tonight? <laughs> and the priest is like, oh, no, 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 no. He's a <laughs> priest. But the first scene of the first Rocky movie and Stallone said that he put this in there as an inspiration and also as an archetype of who Rocky was, was the very first scene in Rocky is a picture of 
Jesus Christ because mm-hmm. there's the he's fighting Spider Rico in the basement of a Catholic church, right? <laughs> uh, 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 and it's uh, it, it pans down from. Can uh, we go back to Catholicism like that? Uh, right. Yeah. Oh, I would love to have a boxing ring in the uh, basement of my church. You name the time, I'll put one in there. Really? Yeah. Would you pay for it? Oh, you're down. I'm down. Oh, yeah, me, and you, oh, I'm down. me and you, mano a mano, I'll kick you in the knee. <laughs> no, so Stallone, he said, look, I, you know, he was obviously mega Italian and Catholic. His first scene of his first breakthrough yeah, movie, he said that Rocky was divinely inspired. He's like, there's no way that came from me. I wrote it in three days, changed the course of my life. I can wow, only attribute beautiful. that to God. But then he also said, look, he got huge in the 80s. And he's like, I fell away from my faith, you know? Uh-huh. He's running around making tango and cash and God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> tango and cash. And, uh, or the one where he was a country singer. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. What? yeah. I don't there, think there, I saw that. Stallone is, cocaine's a hell of a drug, right? <laughs> That's so, he's, doesn't, That's he has that, you know, really strong Northeast accent. Yeah. And a country singer? Yeah. But, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, so he said he fell away from uh, he fell away from the faith for a while in the eighties. Um, it's that fast. Oh no, the movie line, was man. called Rhinestone. It was with um, <laughs> with uh, Dolly Parton. <laughs> right, are, are you serious? I'm serious. Wow. Never... He's got a little Guido look to him though on the cover of that thing. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. total Guido. Dude. That's, oh my God. That is glorious. Hey, hey, hey. it's me and Dolly. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, my dog died, and uh, my pickup truck, it broke down, so, you know. <laughs> I gotta fix it. It's all busted. So, no, Stallone said he fell away from the faith during uh, the 80s. He was at the peak of his uh, fame. He's like, look, it's hard to to maintain faith in that kind of tempest, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you have everything and anything yeah. you want at any time. And he's like, it is, you know, you're not communicating with your family. You have no foundation. It's just all a whirlwind. And he's like, I fell away from the faith. But then he said, um, uh, he... <laughs> one of his children were born sick and that he said that he just started putting everything in God's hands and he trusted God's omnipotence and that, um, being Catholic puts me where I should be. I was always alone in the world. I thought I would have to handle things my own way, but I thought if I put myself in Jesus's hands and ask for insight and guidance, I'm basically taking the yoke off of me and using his wisdom to make the proper decision. That's beautiful. Good for you. Right. So blessed to, so I mean I don't know if Jesus was helping him on whether or not to make Rocky Five, because Rocky Five was pretty rough. Oof. But yeah. and the but, movie after that was great. Bel- Rocky Balboa was Rocky awesome. Balboa was, but th- then Creed, Creed's Creed came out, and I I really like I liked both those of those. Those are good. Yeah. So Stallone, Catholic, fantastic. Uh, the goat is also Catholic. Tom Brady. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Him and Giselle, they're both Catholic. Both got married. Uh, they're married in the church. Um, Although Tom Brady's not a good Catholic, and he's probably you know, I think he's gotten into new age, new age stuff. Yeah, and yeah. His but, wife uh, might have gotten into some witchcraft, is what they uh, were saying. Yeah, that's weird. Really? Yeah. That's a recent extra thing. prayers. Oh, recent yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we I covered a story like that. on yeah. that, and he told he talked about it um, regarding the Super like, Bowl earlier this year. Yeah, yeah how it helped his uh, his longevity. Yeah, or something like and that. And I I think a that lot of that has. Then? It's like Ricca or Wicca. Wicca, I don't know. yeah. I think it, oh, a lot wow. of it has Ricky, to do with Ricky. ignorance, though. Yeah. You know, I don't think, I mean, to me, it it all goes back to formation. We yeah. don't know how they were formed yeah, yeah. as Catholics, and we really can't judge. Yeah. But obviously, it's wrong. But I tell you, I've I've been invited to you know a box at a you know a, a professional sports team. I was invited to go to this to this game and. And, um, I was, you know, I thought it was out of personal relationship Padres and I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to not comment. And can you maybe do it for the Indians too? And the Browns? <laughs> they, we, we need it. But I, I went into the box and I thought it was out of just personal friendship and relationship. And I walked in and there was like six priests and I realized immediately that I was being used as a superstitious token. Oh my God. And I walked out, I walked out of the box and I left, I left the the game, oh, man. and I haven't, I haven't been back. Then he went and so, went and worked for the Astros and went out in center field and relayed signals. But, but the, but the sense of, Come on. The, but the sense of that, I mean, it, it, it opens people up to do things spiritually because they're so hungry for a win or victory mm-hmm. uh, or success, worldly success, that you start opening yourself up to spiritual practices that are very questionable and at times very, very dark. And after that experience, I mean, I've, I've separated myself, 
you know, from, from those types of realities, because it could even have been, uh, intoxicating for me. Like, Oh, this is great. I get to participate and, and be at this level of involvement with a professional team and blah, 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 blah. But that can, that can be serious. That like, could be, it, a, you and, can get infested. No. And it, it, I tell you in my gut, my gut experience was like, this is dark and I can't participate in it. And it was definitely the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Browns need an exorcism, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be yeah. happy to go there and and sprinkle hey, some exercise yeah. salt. And, I'll tell you what. Next time you come up to Cleveland, let's let's let, I'll get we'll get uh, salt. We'll drive around the stadium. Let's do a I'm, I'm let's down. do a public blessing Jeez. of the of, of the uh, factory of sadness. <laughs> do it from a helicopter. <laughs> I, I think it's important to note, though, that Tom Brady did meet Pope John Paul II. He, he had a personal meeting with him. Yep. There's cool. a picture. Yes. I saw a video. Yeah. Picture of Brady and, and uh, John Paul together. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a lot of championships. I'm right holding there. out hope for that, man. I mean, again, that that level of, of prestige and fame and, you know, what he's done athletically is absolutely impressive. He truly is the GOAT. Um, but that I, after hearing that, I mean, that's going to call me to prayer for both of yes. them. They're good. They're good people. And I just think uh, it's very easy to get sucked into that world, especially yeah. when you're immersed in it every single day. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we don't we don't know what kind of formation they've had or anything. Yeah. I mean, they obviously need administered to and hopefully God will put those people in their lives. Mm -hmm. What type of pastoral support do they have around them? And, right. and that and that is a good that's a good question. Yeah, having that amount of money, that amount of influence, being the most successful quarterback of all time and the most successful model of all time. And I mean, I just can't imagine trying to live a faith oh, with that amount of success. success yeah. mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be absolutely you have insane. everything at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I mean, I know for me personally, no matter what happens, you know, getting a new phone or getting a new computer, you know, that's all temporal. And then you're trying to fill yourself up with all these stuff mm -hmm. and it's just like never ending. And then finally it's just like, well, I have all this stuff, but I still feel empty. All right. So this one's for you. All right. Now I, I know that these are, this, this is the moment I've been waiting right. for. So, Shakira. <laughs> Shakira. <laughs> Shakira is a Catholic. Is but, uh, yes. She was on the list. Shout but, out to Shakira. And this one I think is probably going to be the most surprising <laughs> name on here. <laughs> and I don't know mind. why it should be. But it just seems so. Actually, makes me happy. And <laughs> Lil Wayne is a oh practicing Catholic, a devout practicing I Catholic. My no brother needs idea. to listen to this right now. Oh my Thomas, gosh. listen to this. This Lil is amazing. I, I really didn't know. I'm a big Lil Wayne fan, dude. I, I, I I'm a big Lil Wayne fan. That's, I've been, <laughs> that, that is a sense. There's, there's this. There's this T-shirt that I've been wanting to buy for a long time, and it's the Wayne brothers, and it's the Duke John Wayne. And, and Lil, Lil Wayne, Wayne on a shirt, and they're both wearing cowboy gear. Wait, do you have one? No, I need to buy one because <laughs> now that I realize that both of them are like epic Catholics, that's legit. See, this is the beauty of the Catholic Church is that you can have John Wayne <laughs> and Lil Wayne, and they're both Catholics, and there's room for everyone in between. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, right. that's how amazing the Catholic Church is. Mm -hmm. So no, yeah, Lil Wayne, uh, a couple years ago, he had like a seizure or something. Oh, wow. And I think everyone assumed it was drugs, but he actually has like epilepsy or some kind of diseases. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was in the hospital, almost in a coma or something really oh. messed up, and he really was relying on prayer. But can you imagine, for all you people out there who have been to a Lil Wayne concert, which I... I don't even know. What I, I don't, I don't even know, know what that sounds yeah. like or what that experience is like. But just know that before that concert happened, Lil Wayne and his crew yeah. read the Bible and pray rosaries before Lil Wayne concerts. That's <laughs> oh my incredible. gosh, dude. That's awesome. Wow. I never I, I would have knew never... that. Wow. That's awesome. He's yeah. immensely talented. One yeah, of the greatest he? rappers ever. Really? Yeah, I'm surprised oh. you've he never actually heard He plays him guitar, though. too, which I always oh, thought was cool. he's incredibly musical. He yeah. has all of his lyrics in his brain. Like, he doesn't even write write stuff down. Like, oh he works gosh. out these, these beautiful, you know, lyrical expressions. The bright guy, then. Oh, he's so Super bright, bright, man. So yeah. another very, really very talented good. musician who you might not suspect is Catholic is Jack White from the, the White Stripes and the Racking Tours. I didn't know yeah. that. He yeah. actually was... Um, Considering seminary, that's how Catholic he is. There was this really good wow. thing where him and Colbert were challenging each other. Who's more Catholic? Who's more Catholic? Yeah. Who knows more about the faith? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty the funny. Catholic was pretty throwdown, funny. The Catholic like throwdown, kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to check that out. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, Catholic throwdown. So Jack White, you know, White Stripes. Yeah, wow. great band. That is amazing. Really the White Stripe him. almost was one of those collars. <laughs> That's yeah. probably where he got the name from. I don't think so. No, you don't think so. Maybe that could be. <laughs> Maybe so. 
we we've covered a lot of really high profile Catholics in Hollywood and in celebrities. Media. Um, and it's look, I am in under no, I guess, uh, confusion that not all of these are going to be saints, right? Mm -hmm. They're not. They're celebrities who were raised Catholic, and their faith impacts their art and their performances. And they try to publicly at least mention the fact they're Catholic. And we at least owe them the dignity to accept that. And even if they're not good Catholics, at least accept them that they are part of the body of Christ and pray for them. Mm. Now, but there are some Catholics in Hollywood who are actually, you know, uh, there are some Catholics in Hollywood who are astoundingly good Catholics, very orthodox, that I think that a lot of people should know about. Um, one of them is uh, Patricia Heaton. Oh, yeah. So she was on... Um, uh, Everyone Loves Raymond, and then the show The Middle, which is a really good show. And now uh, she's got a new show called Carol's Second Act. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But there's she, she's said a lot of things that are just incredibly orthodox. She's very pro-life. She's very, I guess, brave that in the face of Hollywood, she has yeah. no holds barred about being orthodoxly Catholic. No, she she's always talking about how pro-life she is, and she she is not afraid to speak her faith yeah. anymore. Um she had a she had a recent experience with the Eucharist, and she said the Eucharist she just brought her to tears during Mass. Mm. And then um, that was when I think she she fell away from the church for a while, and she ended up she did get divorced and remarried, but she got her marriage blessed in the church and got that other marriage annulled. And um, her one of her sisters is actually a sister in the. Dem Nashville Dominicans. Oh, wow. In, in, I love that. Yes. The Nashville Dominicans are amazing. Awesome. They are amazing. Oh, they should be celebrities. And, yes. they, we've got some at schools. Really? Right. And so she she also recently did an interview with Stephen Colbert, and that that article went huge on our website. She said, she, she just said it with such humility about her career. It was so beautiful. She said, you should glorify God with your career rather than yourself. And she's come to realize that. Mm. And she talked about overcoming her drinking habit. She was having a drinking, she had a drinking habit and she just flat out quit and said, this isn't good for my life. And, you know, she, she talked about, she didn't say it, you know, the memento mori. She talked, she, she uh, hinted at that and said how she's kind of realizing that death is, you know, could happen any day, especially because she's getting older and she's really just, I guess, connecting more with her faith and with our Lord. So that's, her, a, that's pretty bold for a, a celebrity beautiful to be message. that straightforward with their faith. Yes. Yeah. It's so, I mean, and she, she's just such a blessing, I think to society right now, because we really need that kind of a, an example. Yeah. Another uh, celebrity that's very Catholic and very open about their faith in a very powerful way is James Bond, Pierce Brosnan. Yes. Oh. Pierce Brosnan, uh, he's the Irish Bond, right? You know, um, and Pierce Brosnan played Bond, I think, for three or four films, and he was great as Bond, but uh, he went through some pretty difficult moments in his life, and uh, but the Catholic faith, surprisingly, is what carries James Bond, you know? Mm. So do you yeah. have anything from him on your yeah, on I have a I have a quote from him. He said, prayer helped me. In those moments of time, I think he had a family member or his wife, his wife was sick. Died. His mm. wife died. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan's wife died. It helped me with the loss of my wife to cancer and with a child who had fallen on tough times. Now prayer helps me to be a father, to be an actor, and to be a man. It always helps to have a bit of prayer in your back pocket. At the end of the day, you have to have something. And for me, that is God, my Catholic upbringing, my faith. You have been, you have to be as kind as you can be to yourself and to other people. And you have to live life as boldly as you can. Outstanding. Great. Outstanding. I didn't know. Good jobs, Jay. Yeah. I had James no Bond. idea. Yeah. Nothing. I just watched Mrs. Doubtfire the other day and he was in, oh, yeah, he he was is in, that, in that movie. And it was with Robin Williams. One of my favorite scenes in Robin <laughs> Williams film was when he threw the orange at the back of his head and hit him in the head. He's like, <laughs> It was a, a drive-by fruiting. <laughs> uh, as a good Catholic, I'm sure you forgave him. Oh. Or her, Mrs. Duff, or her, whatever. And Pierce Brosnan's response, like reaction. His face. Oh, man, he played a great character in that film. Uh, another good, uh, I mean, maybe not as famous here, but in Europe certainly is uh, Andrea Bocelli. Mm. Oh. And he's one of the four tenors. He's just 
one of the greatest, uh, you know, operatic Is he blind? Is he the one that's blind? Yes, yes. he's okay. blind. I, I don't think he's fully blind, but legally blind. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The Catholic faith definitely guides his life. I think there was even his uh, mother was advised to have an abortion and being uh, because he had developmental Special issues. Needs, yeah. And she didn't because of her faith. And now because of her courage and her decision, we have one of the greatest voices that is, mm. you know, the human ear has ever heard. What a great story. Oh, yeah. Has has been able to grace the church, sing at the Vatican multiple times um, because his mother had that type of faith and that faith carries on in him, you know. And he recently visited the tomb of Padre Pio or in, and venerated his incorrupt body. And he said he's had a, he's had a devotion to St. Padre Pio and he said he's always felt his protection. Mm. And he also uh, went and walked on his knees in reverence. I believe it was at Fatima. And he said, every breath becomes a prayer. Mm. He yeah. is devoutly Catholic. Mm. It is just so beautiful to see. And he recently sang, um, I think at the, the Padre Pio, when he visited that, he sang the Ave Maria. I think it was for his mother, but mm. um, yeah, he, he sang it at the, no, it was at the Blessed Transit of Padre Pio this year, and he was wearing a rosary around his neck. Beautiful. He mm. is so, I mean, I can't even tell you how, how amazing of a Catholic example he pa is. Padre Pio has such a reach. <sighs> Padre just, Pio is just a... Powerhouse. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. I, I have a, a lock of his beard. Oh, you do? It's, a oh, yeah, wow. I, I, it's right next to my bed. I sleep oh, next to it all the time. I got to see can that I get, Can I get a hair from that? No. Come on, man. You come on. over no. anytime. Yeah. <laughs> my parents have a, a piece of his, a cloth dipped in his blood. Mm. Wow. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Being bearded, I think I'd want to go for the beard, though. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah, oh, man, I love it. me up, dude. I mean, just, just, a, just a little snip. <laughs> yeah, come on. I want, yeah, one strand. Hey, you never know. Maybe somebody will reach out and just send you one. Yeah, ex <laughs> uh, That would be ex uh, talking pronunciation. That'd be an uh, ex capillaris. <laughs> or, uh, well, actually, that'd be ex barbus. Barbus. Yeah. yeah. Barbus. Uh, barbus. Um, another one, and uh, I think we, we've talked about him before um, Harry Connick Jr., another really good singer, but this guy's. Catholic man, he's really he does a lot of stuff. He supports like nuns. He supports all kinds of uh, Catholic works. Um, a good New Orleans Louisiana, Louisiana Catholic, Catholic, you know, <laughs> which is a Catholic breed unto themselves, and they're they're just awesome. My uh, where Little Wayne's from? My, really? Mm -hmm. uh, I see, know that he's knowledge. Yeah, yeah. My uncle's from New Orleans and Louisiana, and that brand of Catholicism. It's just a wild and wooly French Southern Catholic. It's really. It's actually really awesome. Don't they have a lot of perpetual adoration chapels my, down there? Yeah, my one it's of insane. my one of my um, great aunts was actually a um, cloistered Carmelite down there. Wow! Uh, yeah, a ton of religious orders. The Jesuits have great prominence there, in, in relationship to evangelization, you know, the French settlement, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Pretty special. Mm -hmm. Deep roots of faith. So, you know, we we talked about a lot of celebrities, right? And we can keep on going with this list on yeah. and on and on. And I think the point is that there is Catholics in Hollywood. They're not all perfect, but the ones that at least have the courage to say they are Catholic, even in the face of their imperfections, we should be supporting instead of tearing down. Uh, us tearing down the Catholics who are strong enough to say, I am Catholic in this crazy dark environment, deserve our support no matter what level of fidelity they have if they're very uh, faithful then we should celebrate them if they're not terribly faithful but still are trying we should support them and pray for them 100 percent agreed yeah. we, mm -hmm. ne we need to do that we don't agree too often but i think we agree that, on this absolutely yes. this whole episode i mean yeah. we've been in agreement, which is that's why i sit in between excellent. you guys yeah. <laughs> it's the holy spirit yeah, otherwise, <laughs> we're gonna, otherwise we're going to be having stallone uh, direct a boxing match between us <laughs> in the basement of your church, church. <laughs> He's gonna be looking in the mirror, yo padre. Bless myself because I don't want to get beat up too bad. <laughs> hey, the and you know, if any of these celebrities want to be on the Catholic talk show, yeah. Oh, you're more yeah. than welcome. Cool. Reach out to us. We yeah. are so happy that you're on the show today, and yeah, we're so blessed coming. to have you here in the studio. Thank you. Yeah, thank so, you for sharing. I'm your so gifts. glad to be here. So now, make sure you go to churchpop.com. Really great website. Uh, a lot of. Um, you know, I'm friends with the founder. Um, you and I have worked together. Um, 
sharing articles back and forth for a couple years. So um, great partners of the show. They share our show every week. Yes, and, we do. Uh, I write an article for the show every week. Yeah. So definitely go check them out, support them. Um, why don't you tell them how they can support us too? So if you go to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic talk show, you'll see ways that you could support us in multiple tiers. And that again, helps us to reach new markets and to reach new audiences around the world and bring in people just like we have today. What a gift church pop is to the church. And truly there's so many of my parishioners that subscribe to you and, and really uh, receive a lot of content. They've been very excited to share the fact that, Oh, I saw the Catholic talk show on, on church pop. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. huh? You know, they're, they're curious to find out. Yeah, you shout know. out to Brantley. Brantley's a guy. <laughs> yes. And Brantley. Caroline. Yes. And Caroline. Uh, anyone you want to give a shout out to or how they can follow you? Um, well, I, you can follow us at church pop. You can follow me at, uh, J Burke pile on Instagram. And J.M. Burkpile on Twitter because J. Burkpile wasn't available. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Jacqueline Burkpile on Facebook. So, um, and you can follow my friend Caroline's uh, blog at Be Still by Caroline. She has a beautiful blog and sells amazing jewelry. Cool. People to follow. And mm. Brantley. Mm-hmm. He has a website. I just, yeah. is Brantley Mill- Milligan? Milligan. 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 Mm-hmm. But, you know, what we were talking about before, you know, Delacross mentioned how, you know, he got off of Facebook because of the negativity and social media is a medium and it's all about who you follow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some positive people out there to follow. There's some positive celebrities and, and priests and religious that are out there doing their thing and sharing the good news. So be sure to subscribe to them and follow them and Post materials that that edify, you know, support people publicly on these forums of of criticism. You know, get out there and let your voice be heard. Represent Christ who continues to admonish the sinner in a loving way by meeting them where they are and walking with them in faith. We walk together and we're so happy to, to do that with the show and for you to join us each and every week. And so a big shout out to our patrons too. Uh, we really, we can't do this show without you. Right. We don't have Hollywood funding. We don't got billionaires <laughs> backing us. We, it's all, well, we have you. Yeah, yeah, we have you. And without you, we really couldn't do it. So go yeah. to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic talk show, uh, considering, uh, supporting us. So we continue having guests and paying Howard to run the cameras <laughs> and keep the lights on because we can't do it without you. So we really appreciate your support. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And see you next week.